All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last admin session for today. Uh, I hope you're still awake and feeling ready to learn some more. Uh, please welcome up to the stage uh, Boris, who is going to take us through 20 first time Jira admin tips to help you get the most out of your system. So please put your hands together for Boris. Hey, guys. Uh, can you hear me? OK, give, let me find the clicker. Yeah, cool. So uh, I may look like a magician. I'm not. It just looks like magic when you're doing something advanced enough. And you know, I'm sure you guys have heard of the shtick. Uh, my slide thing here says, remember thou art mortal. So let's hope I make it through it. Um, this is my ninth summit. So I am somewhere way off in the corner here that you can't really see. But I've been to a lot of these. I've spoken at these things. And uh, yeah, that's me over there somewhere. So why do I know what I'm talking about? I spent four years working in Atlassian support. I'm kind of like the canary in the coal mine. I've also worked with Uber, Zenefits, Priceline. If you've done a certification test, I was a co-author on those. And I've uh, done about 14 years in IT at this point. So I also have a thing. I kind of like collecting things. And if you have kids or you're young enough, you kind of knew the Pokemon, like, got to catch them all thing. So I have <clears throat> almost all the certifications. There's one last one. Um, I can't figure out which one it is, though. So if someone can help me figure it out, I'd really appreciate it. There's a few at this point. Um, clients, so I run Atlas Authority. Some of our clients are little companies like Spotify, Young & Rubicam, which is a global uh, design agency, holding company, Priceline.com, you know, buy flights to come to Summit. So promise 20 in 15 minutes. In fact, there's like 26.59, somewhere in there. I'm trying to burn through all of them. So agenda, uh, converted this from feet, but we're going to do really high level and kind of get down and just go from there. So first one, limit number of admins. Um, too many cooks in the kitchen. Everybody knows kind of how that works, why that's an issue. Um, the, you know, kind of the, the, the how do you actually accomplish that is you need to uh, cooperate and support the teams effectively. People think that like, oh, hey, we're just going to add another admin, and that's going to solve all the problems. That's generally just going to make a bigger mess in the kitchen. And then the two cooks that know what they're doing are just going to get pissed off the third cook, and you're going to get less and less and less high quality food coming down. Uh, there's a lot of research in, just term, in terms of organizational psychology that supports this. So um, it's a pretty easy one. Light side, Jira follows business logic. Dark side, not the other way around. Um, frequently, I talk to management teams, and they say, hey, could you please uh, help us design this perfect process, and then we're going to enforce it in Jira, and then everybody's just going to do what we say. And that works about as often as you expect. So please don't try and do that. Make sure you involve your teams in communication and uh, work closely with stakeholders to really build out uh, healthy and, and functional business logic. It may not meet your goals today, but you can continue to iterate and improve over time. Flowcharts, uh, one of the biggest, one of the highest like profit engagements that we do with companies is we charge them to come in and sit there and listen and then draw flowcharts on a whiteboard. It's literally, we just sit there for three days while their teams talk about what they do and draw it out. Uh, we try and encourage them to just use like Dryo or something, like a plugin, and just do it. But when you get things, when you get a bunch of people in a room, you draw flowcharts, uh, people learn about who's doing what and why. So it's, um, it's, it's really, really critical. And a lot of people are visual, so this is going to change their understanding of process. Uh, there has been times where we've done this, and people have ended up cutting off chunks of their process as a result. So it actually ended up improving things in general. So getting, uh, getting deeper in. Um, this is a picture which exists in the Atlassian documentation. Uh, for the people taking pictures of all this, I believe that the slide deck will be available online, so you don't actually need to take pictures. But um, this document, this image is online. It is, uh, it is not even up to date anymore, because now you have prior, uh, what are they, resolution schemes or something like that? Per what? Priority schemes? Yeah, there's another one now. But anyways, my point is that it's, it's a complicated relationship. And you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to learn how this stuff interacts. Uh, I know a bunch of admins who have printed this out and just leave it by their computer. It really helps them. So you, and just remember, practice and staging. Prod is not there for that. Um, standardized op config objects. So it's going to make your job a lot easier if you do this, and it's going to keep your system performant. So basically, if you take time to build out, let's say, a good notification scheme that doesn't spam the hell out of everybody, um, 
people are going to be happy, and they're not going to ask you for custom schemes. Same thing applies with fields and workflows, and, and, and it really, this is the key to long-term sustainability. Um, make sure that you actually name an object with the type in its own name. So you call a workflow, you know, bandage for Jira workflow. Uh, there are a lot of elements in the UI where this will be displayed, and it won't tell you what the object type is. This helps prevent that. Um, another thing is to control the order. You can put little stars and asterisks. What they do is they, in, many, in most places, things are listed alphabetically. Uh, stars, uh, asterisks, and pluses get pushed to the top, so it's a really easy way to have your standardized schemes stand out really easily and be fast and accessible and push adoption. Um, Really, really, really document your system publicly. This is probably the most common failure I see amongst even really experienced admins. They're like, oh man, Boris, like my user requested a project and he wants like 30 new custom fields. Like, how could he possibly not understand that this is a bad idea? And I'm like, okay, well, did you give him a list of custom fields that already exist? And they just kind of look at me like, uh, I'm like, well, how can the user possibly, you know, make a request that's educated and valid if you haven't done your job of exposing the configuration? Because Jira doesn't do it. So for us, we do that using screenshots um, and uh, SQL queries to build out Confluence pages and, and communicate to the clients. Um, shared configurations during project creation. This is really important. Again, helps keep the number of configuration objects in check. This will keep performance and scale going. So if you look at this little video, um, Atlassian loves to do anti-patterns, which is where they do defaults that actually are bad for you. So if you want to actually make a shared thing, this is what it takes. You got to scroll all the way down, and then you pick it, and then I don't remember how this video goes, but basically you got to go all the way down there. Uh, this is a recorded for cloud server, similar. It's a little link in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, beyond that, you know, just because you're using um, uh, just because you're using shared schemes, it, it, it's a good start. But then, how do you keep the stuff updated? How do you sync prod and staging? So there's configuration management tools. Uh, we recommend Botron Configuration Manager or Adaptive Project Configurator. For Jira, a mouthful of names, but uh, they're great. Um, it's really, really important to do this kind of change management, especially because what this allows you to do is it allows you to say, hey, dev environment, you guys can be admins. This thing gets refreshed every Sunday. You can build out your own changes. We can vet them and then just copy them in. So it can also save you a lot of work while allowing people to be pseudo admins. Um, OK, going even deeper, uh, role-based permissions. Role-based notification schemes, role-based issue security schemes, and role-based workflows. You should use roles everywhere. Uh, two things here. One, it scales in terms of amount of admin work that you have to do, because you don't have to do it. You now tell the project administrator that this is their problem. Um, and it allows, again, self-governance, which is less problems for you. You know, you get to focus on other work. How do you do it? Uh, just go configure them. It's standard docs. Um, Never have duplicate field names. Oh my God, this is terrible. You're, uh, you're trying to search, like JQL is really the big differentiator between people who know what they're doing and people who don't know what they're doing in Jira. So if you don't know what JQL is, like go learn that. That's uh, like, uh, I was talking with the training team. I'm like, I need a 20 hour JQL training just to make sure people really, really get it. They're like, that's insane. I'm like, no, really, <laughs> that's all I need. But uh, if, you, if you get duplicate field names, people will get confused very, very easily. Um, so, just don't do that. Don't reserve JQL terms as field names. So um, all the words in that list are functions or a variety of, com they're compared in operators, whatever. There's, there's a bunch of things. But um, they, uh, I, I've, you know, like due date, for example, people do make fields called due date, and then they do put them as one word, which makes it even more broken and messed up. So just never use any of these. Um, Field context. So this is something that's going to really bite you as you scale. When you're small, not a huge deal. When you're big, huge problem. So context allow you to take a field and change its behavior between uh, projects and issue type combinations. So And it allows you in each of those to change behavior. So you can say, like, hey, if you have an address dropdown field right, um, in one project, that could be a list of states. Okay. In another project, that could be the list of office buildings that your company has. Right? It allows you to reuse it, and, and it really helps. It also, if you reduce the context thing, 
it will improve indexing in Jira, which means Jira will be faster when it searches, and everything in Jira is powered by search, so everything in Jira becomes faster. Um, resolutions are not statuses. Please don't do this. Uh, it's kind of, again, this is one of those areas where there's an anti-pattern by default, uh, where Atlassian ships some defaults that mislead people. So there's typically not, you don't need more than like a couple finished statuses. You can have like done and abandoned. It's like really it. Um, and then everything else is functionally a resolution, right? Like it's done and canceled, or like done and approved. Well, that approved, that canceled, those are those should be in resolution. Uh, the other thing is, uh, don't clone system fields. This is kind of, um, it's just like if you have another field called summary, it's going to be a bad time. Um, it, it, it'll literally break things in, in, in some situations, especially when you start involving plugins, which make certain assumptions around field names. Um, so yeah. When you create default workflows, they give you this by default. So when you reopen tasks, it will clear the resolution. When you close them, it makes sure to set it. Um, Jira, you know, when it draws a line through an issue, that line just means that there's a value in the resolution field. There's no other like logical decision making behind it. So having very consistent setting of that matters because all of your reports are also based on that same logic of is there a value in that field or when was that field value set. So that's an important one. Simplified workflows. A lot of people are really afraid of these. They're like, oh my god, we have no control. Anyone can do anything. The world is burning. And I'm like, so what? Like, if you're running like a 10-person dev team and they don't have a ton of external dependencies, so what? Let them do this, right? Like, it's, not, it's really not a big deal. A lot of people are just afraid of it because it's like, hey, I have to give up control. It's fine. Give up control. Let your team work. Um, getting into random miscellaneous stuff. Um, half a test environment, please, 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 at least one. Um, with one client, we had eight different test environments because we were doing so many parallel uh, merges of the system. So we were merging eight different Jira systems into one. So we needed like eight parallel staging environments where we were testing all the different combinations of everything. Um, really, really important. Um, brand your instance. This one is really, really underlooked. Um, Jira is oftentimes disliked by a lot of people just as like a like, oh man, I had to use it at my last company and I didn't like it. So if they come in and they see the same branding, they're gonna like have that same association. If you change the branding to really reflect your company and your company culture and your company colors, et cetera, um, we've seen, especially like this is a Jira thing that we're talking about, but in Confluence especially actually, like way, way, way more adoption. Um, so in this case, I just grabbed a couple examples from the internet of, of public Jira instances, and they all seem to be kind of green-ish, but you can see that none of them, even with very, very minor out-of-the-box theming modifications, right? This isn't using any plugins or anything. This is just them uh, customizing it using native features. Uh, it looks completely different, and it feels completely different, and the users will actually feel that difference. Um, so external resources that will help you, you know, beyond this talk. Uh, there's the Atlassian community. They have a booth upstairs. You should go talk to them. It's uh, community.atlassian.com. It's like the public Q&A forum. You can think of it kind of like Stack Overflow for Atlassian stuff. There is the Atlassian user groups, which are meetings of individuals that care about Atlassian stuff. Uh, you can go, if you just Google like Aug uh, Atlassian, you'll find the page. You can search for your city. If uh, there's not one in your city, you can start one, and Atlassian will help fund it. Um, there's also Team Tour and Summit, so you're at Summit, that's great. Team Tour is a kind of like mini summit that happens uh, sometimes. Um, there's also a ton of content on YouTube, especially from the Jira 6-4 days. Atlassian produced training content that they used to sell. They put all of that up for free on YouTube when it kind of became too old, but it's all still correct. The UIs are a little different, but the content is all still there. So there's a ton there. Uh, CAC is confluence.atlassian.com. You should check that out. That's the documentation. There's a bunch of knowledge base articles. I think I wrote like half of the top 10. 
Um, and uh, obviously partners like ourselves, you know, we're happy to take your money and help, but um, a lot of partners also put out a lot of free content. Like um, I wanna say like Adaptivist has, uh, has a podcast where they're frequently inviting all kinds of people on there so you can go and check that out. Uh, we blog with a bunch of technical content as well. Um, so books, there's the Jira Strategy Admin Workbook from Rachel Wright, she's around and I think they're doing giveaways of it at a couple of the booths. And then we have a Practical Jira Administration and Practical Jira Admin, Jira, Practical Jira Plugins by Matt Dorr who's sitting up here. Um, so you guys can find him and ask him for that. I personally prefer the Practical Jira Administration one but that's because my name's in it, so that's it. This is a summary of everything, just it's no big deal, just remember it. But more seriously, uh, li limit the number of admins, understand object relationships, document your system publicly, and have a test environment. It's really, really important. If you do get those four right, you're probably going to do OK. Um, I am out. I am over time, I believe. Oh, so stay calm and don't despair. This was a guy in the community who actually wrote this. He, uh, he yeah, you can't have it all. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> oh. We'll stay here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, all right, just before we lose Boris, any questions anybody would like to ask? No questions? All right. You, you can find me at a booth I-10 if you want to ask questions later. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.